I, what? I can see. Okay, great. Okay. okay, here we go. All right, so um, so you can, you're going to control this now, correct? Yep. Okay, you just good. tell me when you want the next slide. Okay. Okay, so um, this is at a location of a Mount Airy. Um, I had pretty much finished shooting image, images for the day, but I was looking for something different to shoot. So I, I saw this young man, or I'll call him a young man. He was sitting in his car waiting to be um, tested for COVID-19. And I got into a conversation about him, with him about why um, he was being tested. He told me he was a, I worked at a, a senior citizen facility and he wanted to make sure that he wasn't um, COVID-19 um, positive because he had family at home and he didn't want to um, bring COVID-19 home with himself. He was also concerned about the uh, people at the uh, senior citizen facility he worked at. So um, I, he was sitting in his car. So I, I was seeing his face and the sunlight hitting uh, a portion of his face through the, um, the front windshield. So I decided to capture this image because I wanted to show something different with regard to um, sites I was seeing at the, uh, at the testing site. And um, that's what this portrait is all about. You know, just trying to find images that are different from uh, what you would normally see if you were walking around a, uh, a testing site where a COVID-19 um, activity was going on. So you can move, move to the next one. And this is in um, Chester, Pennsylvania. Um, the person in the left is one of the uh, nurses uh, who is part of the volunteer group that has been going around uh, Philadelphia testing uh, people. And at this particular uh, location, it was a, um, a union hall. There were uh, normally there are people who are sitting in chairs being tested. And they also have another um, uh, situation where people line up in their cars to be tested. And I uh, shot this probably for 85 millimeter. And I just wanted to get a, uh, a image, which you would, I guess, traditionally see in a newspaper of a, uh, a nurse testing an individual for uh, COVID-19. And a lot of times, I just want to say this, when I, uh, what attracts my attention with regards to what I do capture, images I do capture, I tend to look for um, highlights and shadows. And that's what I respond to. Um, so that's what this image is um, pretty much about. Uh, let me go to the next one. This was the first location I went to, I believe. This was in um, North Philadelphia at a church. And this was the day where I was really trying to figure out um, how to capture images and not be intrusive with regard to the uh, person I was capturing images of or the nurses or doctors that were on site. Um, and I happened to capture this at a moment when the nurse was uh, about to put the swab into this uh, young man's uh, nose. And it's one, you know, one of the things that's interesting when I was going around with the doctors and the nurses, uh, the people weren't certain how this was going to feel going up their nose. So some individuals, it didn't bother at all. Other people, it really, really bothered to the point where they pulled away. And so there were times when uh, the nurses or doctor really had to persuade the uh, individual being tested to like really, really relax. This guy um, actually, it didn't bother him at all. And I, actually, I like this song. This was a, uh, a coincidence, but his face mask has on it aim. So I thought that kind of really played into that picture really, really well. And if anyone wants to say anything as I go along, yes, you feel free to. Um, you know. So why, I mean, the one thing I'm really interested in is like the doctors mm -hmm. that did this, right. you know, they were, this was kind of a, a volunteer or were they paid? They're all volunteers. That's what was so beautiful about the, uh, about COVID-19 um, consortium. They were all volunteers everyone and Dr. Um, Ayla Stanford, um, she was paying for initially 
initially the testing of these um, of these people or the lab that she was sending the tests to uh, she had a, such a great relationship this is my understanding anyway that uh, they were just you know sending the uh, the tests in and get results but all her her staff was 100 percent volunteer all of them um, they were all either um, registered nurses, medical students, um, and there were some volunteers that weren't in the medical field, but they were all volunteers 100%. It was beautiful. And what I enjoyed about being around them, it was such a positive um, energy every time I went out there. Of course, you could feel that they were doing something really, really positive for the, uh, the communities that they were going to. And um, in this particular image right here, uh, the uh, woman in the car, and I can't, you know, it's being hit by uh, images of the people who are attending this uh, presentation tonight. She was actually taking a uh, picture of this um, individual and they're still practicing social distancing at this moment, at this time. Um, so that's why I decided to uh, capture the image because you know, people are still being safe. I mean, they are always being safe. Uh, and the other thing I noticed going further into the project, initially people, the nurses and the doctors, they, a lot of them were only wearing one mask, but as time went on, I noticed that they were starting to wear two masks. So as a result, as a result when I would go out, I started wearing two masks also. This image was captured in, um, in Pennsylvania. So you can move on to the next one. So this is another uh, a church. I believe this is up. Um, I think this is in Salem, a Salem Baptist Church. I'm not really quite certain, but they were preparing. They had just left the building they, that they prepare in, and they were, you know, moving towards the cars uh, where people were sitting in the cars to uh, be tested. These con this container. That red container there, uh, that's where they, once they do the testing, the swab, they put it in a, um, a, another small container, and then they put the container into this um, that red container. And as I said, you know, everyone in this image, and, you know, along with this, this group of people, they're all volunteers, 100% volunteers. Did they, I guess everybody, would, did they do this? I mean, they're all medical professionals, so they were. Oh, yeah, about doubt. They, they, they were, doing... yeah, they were a few people who were not medical professionals. Um, there were people here who, um, for example, if you look towards the right of this image, in between those two uh, medical professionals, you'll see uh, a guy with a black shirt on. You, 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 you yeah. Know, yeah. Okay. So he was. He was a coordinator. So when, when people were pulling up, um, waiting to be tested, he would di direct them as far as where to park and how to park. And um, he was there every time I went out. He was there every time I went out. So yeah, I'll say 90%, 95% of the people on her staff were medical. Um, volunteers, but there were some individuals who weren't in the uh, medical field, but they were volunteering to help coordinate, you know, the uh, the, uh, the running, the smooth running of the uh, event every time they went out. So you can move on to the next one unless someone has questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. So this is out in West Philadelphia, 52nd Market Street. Um, this was my attempt to again capture something different. So I decided, I noticed that the, uh, the way the sun was hitting this particular corner where there's a lot of um, shadow areas and, um, and um, highlights. And I just waited for uh, the medical people to fall into areas where uh, there were highlights. And 
I shot maybe, I don't know, maybe four or five images, but I wanted to do an image that was layered where you could see um, that it was a, they were in a, some sort of community environment in Philadelphia. Um, but that they were also where can I say? I wanted a more creative looking image is what I'm trying to say. Basically, I wanted something that was more maybe street photography, I guess you could say. Okay. Was there advance notice for the community to like, how did people know to come? Uh, through um, Instagram. They would post, they generally went out on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I would get notifications because I would I started following some of the uh, medical people, some of the doctors and some of the nurses, and then one of the uh, one of the uh, coordinators. I followed him also on Instagram. So whenever they posted um, something on Instagram, I knew about it. And also the they were normally going to churches, so they would normally uh, seek the assistance of the churches that they were going to. So those church uh, members were notified normally a day ahead of time, maybe some, maybe sometimes two days um, ahead of time. But it, for the most part, uh, information was coming out a day before they visited whatever particular site they were going to. So this image right here, um, I had been outside for a few hours, and I captured you know images that I could see outside, and I decided to go inside this this room right here. Um, this is where those, um, the testing um, samples, they would take them back into a room inside the uh, church they were normally operating out of or uh, wherever the location was. And they would, I guess, code, you know, the, um, the um, testing uh, material and you know, do a lot of paperwork. And I decided that I wanted to capture an image that showed the activity in that particular room. But I wanted to add something to the um, dynamics of it. So I decided to uh, pre-focus on the door and I waited for uh, someone to walk out of the door. So this is what this capture was all about, you know, creating an image where you can see the background and people, you know, the doctors and nurses um, doing what they normally do inside as far as the paperwork was concerned and I just wanted to add a you know a little bit of a different dynamic to show motion and activity and the uh, the busyness of uh, what you normally don't see outside uh, what, what people that are being tested don't see outside uh, next slide so this was another example of me trying to um, capture something different. Mm -hmm. I've been captured, you know, I've been paying attention and seeing your reflections in the car windows. And I decided one day to really try to capture a image of uh, the health professionals by getting the reflection off the window. And this is what that was. They're actually, this, this is my lens here to the left in the frame actually. Um, and I just focused on the window and captured a reflection that was bouncing off the window. That's a beautiful image. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I, um, when I, I think one reason why I'm so addicted to photography is that when I'm out capturing images, I become so hyper focused on what I'm doing that it's like time stops, or I I, uh, I forget what's going on around me. I'm only focusing on capturing an image, and I think because of that hyper focus that I have a tendency to get into, um, it just really helps me to. Um, you know, capture images and really pay attention. I mean, I like, I really pay attention. And um, I've seen stuff like this before in the past that um, 
other locations I went to. Um, and I think I might have shared, there might be another slide like this or image like this further into this presentation, but actually I like this image myself also, but thank you. So every time they went out to test, um, and like I say, they're normally at churches, they always um, did a prayer before they went out to uh, go outside to test individuals. So I decided I wanted to capture um, that particular um, portion of what they do and um, got up on the back of a stage and just sort of, I shot, I shot a wide angle image of, um, of them doing this little prayer or doing this prayer before they go outside. You know, I, you know, I uh, situated myself so I could capture this, the guys uh, with his hands raised up on the uh, bottom left hand side of the frame. You want the next one? So this was a uh, image I shot in, um, I think it was in um, Williamsburg um, section of Philadelphia. And I captured it because uh, really, I like her hair a lot to tell you the truth, but you know, she was in sort of a uh, still space at that particular moment, sun was hit from her face um, in a particular way. And this is an example also where she's, she has two facial masks on, but she also has that shield on. And she's a, this, is, this is actually a medical, um, a doctor. Um, and it's just my way again of just trying to capture something a little bit different. And I wanted to blow out the background also. And I, you know, I shot this about 85 millimeter um, camera. It's probably around 11 o'clock in the morning. So that's why the, uh, the sun was hitting her face in that particular, uh, particular manner. Anyone have any comments as I go along? Um Robin uh, writes, what's mm. touching about the participants who volunteered to test us? Mm -hmm. They volunteered to bring testing to a community that had previously been neglected. Mm -hmm. There was testing provided on the fringe of these areas that may have been difficult for participants to access. Further, right. a feeling of trust was created by having Black professionals come service the Black community where they lived and worshipped. Without a doubt. And that's what I found so beautiful about being around these Black professionals. And... I mean, they really did um, did this testing with a feeling of love. And I feel I found it very, very uh, uplifting every time I went out there. And um, Robin's correct because the people who came to get tested, they went because they had heard about um, this group of people, this group of professional uh, people. Um, and they had seen her on the news, um, in the newspapers, and she was always positive. She was always positive. So people, you know, from the mostly black and brown communities, they were, they were, when they heard that they were coming, um, that the, you know, black COVID group was coming, they were looking forward to it. And they wanted to be tested also because they were concerned about COVID-19. Um, there were locations I went to, like for example, one of the uh, one of the locations of, I went to early during this project was up in uh, Mount Airy. In that particular day, they tested over 250 people, um, and I think to this date, you know, I think I've read somewhere. I mean, they've tested they've tested nearly 10 10 thousand people or so. I'm not really certain, but they've tested a lot of people. So they're doing a great service to the, um, to the community here in Philadelphia. You can move on. Okay, so this is another uh, example. I had captured all the images that day that I could capture. Um, they were normally, they tended to be photojournalistic on that day. And um, this is one of the in individuals who is not a medical professional, but he is um, very um, essential in what they were doing. And 
I actually shot this through a the window on the driver's side of the vehicle. He was standing on the passenger side of the uh, vehicle. It was a van. Um, I captured, of course, if you look in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see a chair. And right above that chair, you'll see a car. So the chair was uh, normally for people who were, um, who were walking to the testing site. And they were sitting in those chairs to be tested. And the car um, represents to me the cars that the people were sitting in uh, to be tested. And I like the uh, you know the multi multi layer um, story of this particular image. Marsha asks, "What camera do you use, and what editing software do you use?" So I use Nikon's. Um, when I go out and I'm doing um, most of the work I do, I shoot with a, uh, a Nikon, a D750. I've um, the A50 I uh, use also, but normally. I don't take that out on photojournalistic or documentary uh, work, even though later on in this slide presentation, uh, there are a couple images where I did use that particular uh, uh, camera. And as far as software, I use Photoshop. And I have a tendency to, because I'm so much into shadows, I have a tendency to uh, create um, deep shadows in my images. Of course, I believe that there's, um, information in the shadow areas of um, images, or even be honest with you, in the shadow areas of life, there's um, hidden information. And I want to create images that cause people to have to stop and really look. Uh, when I first got into photography, I, I was shooting black and white, and it was just um, this, um, this teaching about the zone system where uh, you create a black and white image from pure white to pure black. Um, I was never a fan of that. I was more a fan. Uh, there was a um, black photographer in uh, Harlem. His name was Roy Carver, And he uh, compressed that zone system uh, to create shadows. And I just love that particular um, belief system. I'm really into shadows, so that's why my images um, look the way they do. It would bore me to have a um, a, uh, a regular image. Yeah, so you move on to the next one. So this is up in the Holmesburg um, section of Philadelphia also. Um, I was standing behind this fence and I saw the uh, two doctors walking towards me. And I decided to use this fence as a uh, way of changing the uh, perspective of the image I was capturing. So I, uh, I focused on a particular uh, part of the payment around where that grass ended. And I just waited for the um, two people to walk into that space where I believed they would be um, in focus enough to, um, to be seen as a uh, clear subject. And also I wanted to show the background. I mean, I want to show neighborhoods, I mean, as far as the uh, areas that they were going to, into. And this was, again, around, probably around 11 o'clock um, in the morning, uh, maybe a little bit later. But just here again, just trying to create something different, you know, but still telling the story of uh, these medical people being in an environment, uh, doing their work and doing it uh, free of service um, in a volunteer way and you know, going on and doing what they had to do. One of the things I found also kind of funny was that that's a, uh, I think that's a TJ Maxx bag that the, uh, the person is carrying. And I asked them sometimes, I said, why are you carrying the, uh, like sometimes they would, they would have a Target bag or, uh, you know, in this particular situation, they had a TJ Maxx bag. Uh, they bought what they could bring to help them do the job they had to do. 
And if you look in the background here, uh, near the end to the right hand, there's a person in red. Uh, she's one of the uh, volunteers, non-medical people volunteers, but I would see her pretty frequently on um, a lot of the uh, sites I went to. We move on to the next one. So this is up in Mount Airy again. It was actually at Enon Baptist Church. Um, and this woman advanced in age, beautiful looking. Um, she wanted to get tested. Uh, she just had an extremely positive um, attitude about life. And I uh, asked her if I could capture an image of her. She said, sure. And so I ended up you know, capturing this particular image. But it was because of her energy. You know, she just has so much energy and I found her to be not just a very beautiful um, soul. And this, she's in this image, she's sitting in her car um, waiting to be tested. And she has her mask uh, pulled down at that particular moment. It was right after this, she's going to be, uh, you know, tested you know, for COVID-19. And she's one of those people who, you know, when they put the uh, swab in her nose, didn't move at all. Same location, uh, Enon Baptist Church, uh, the husband up above and the, his wife to the uh, left-hand side in the background um, and their son. I uh, ended up capturing this image because uh, the beauty of the, uh, of the sun and the, um, I mean, he just stared at me. And the fact that here was a family who was coming to get tested because they were concerned about making sure that they stayed healthy because they didn't want to um, infect, uh, be infected and bring it to their um, young son. And this, is, I did ask these people also if I was, if it's okay if I captured an image that included the uh, young child. And she, they said she wasn't a problem at all. We go to the next one. So this is in Mount Airy also. And the reason why I captured this image was because I started noticing that, is this, is this showing up right here? No, okay, never mind. Anyway, um, I started noticing that even though we were starting to be affected by a COVID-19, people, we're still holding on to the way they would have dressed themselves if there was not COVID-19 with regard to, I mean, this guy had a really nice um, leather jacket on. Uh, yeah, I think he had a, a black a turtleneck sweater on and the cap he was wearing was black also, but he coordinated the, the gloves, which were blue with the face mask, which was blue. And to me, he was staying in a very um, regal manner. And I captured his image and he knew, I asked him if it was okay, he said, cool, no problem at all. We didn't actually say just motion or it was okay. So that's why I captured this particular image. And again, it was about me also wanting to um, show the shadows um, in the image and the highlights. And the fact that if you, in this image right here, if you see a, a, you see a, a, a black shadow that runs from the left of the frame and it, it runs um, through the, um, the end of his right leather sleeve near the end and runs into that black sweater or whatever um, he had on into the mask. And to me, it was, I guess I, I thought about uh, life or something. If that makes any sense to anyone. It's very it's dramatic. Life. It's, yes. a very, it's a very cool picture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, there was another one I captured, but I didn't show it in this particular presentation. Same sort of um, black um, shadow that was running 
um, into the scene up into uh, a woman who was sitting down. Uh, so this is a perspective where I wanted to, I shot through the passenger side of the um, car and I just wanted to get a, a view from a different perspective as if there was a passenger in the car and she was um, watching what the nurse or the doctor or hearing what the nurse or the doctor was saying to the person who was about to be uh, tested for COVID-19. And again, I made sure that I created some shadows in the, um, in the image. I tend to um, underexpose my files. And then I, I, um, I do some burning and dodging, dodging as if I was you know, still in a, uh, a dark room working on black and white prints. So a couple comments here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Joan says the images are very painterly. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, years ago um, when I was doing black and white and I had a black and white um, dark room, my black and white images were the same way. Um, because I was exposed to uh, photographers such as, like I said, a Roydy Carver early in my uh, career, um, uh, Bill Brandt, a photographer from, from Europe, um, Helman Newton, um, the uh, photographer from Brazil, um, Zagato. I lean towards fine art stuff. I mean, that's, that's how my mind clicks. So I try to make images that have that um, feel to them. I really, when I'm doing work for myself or I'm printing files for myself or just working on files for myself that I intend to one day um, show in a, um, a um, gallery, gallery um, environment, that's the way I uh, work on my um, digital files. And I haven't had any prints done in a while because COVID-19, if I had prints done, there's nowhere to show them. Um, I, don't, I don't have any space in my, uh, my living area. So I, uh, I work on these with the uh, intention of one day being shown in a gallery, um, custom framed, um, I hope a feeling of um, high energy and um, soul. So this is another example. And you know, I was at a church. Uh, the guy had just been tested for uh, COVID-19. Um, he was wearing the blue, you know, the blue gloves. And I actually asked him to pose like this. I wanted to create an image. And this is a, um, the image that I um, created. Probably shot it at F28 because I wanted to throw out the um, background. Uh, this is a uh, community up in Mount Airy section of Philadelphia. Uh, decided to shoot a wide angle image because I wanted to show uh, the community and that uh, they weren't just going to um, like North Philadelphia or low income communities uh, to offer uh, COVID-19 testing. This is a uh, upper class um, neighborhood in, in Mount Airy. And these people are in line, they're um, filling out forms to uh, be tested for the uh, COVID-19. The guy in a black t-shirt He's one of the uh, non-medical people uh, that I had mentioned earlier, and he was just helping people, you know, fill out forms if they had any questions. And they always made sure that everyone who was in their environment wore their mask, or if they, if the people showed up without a mask, they had masks to give out to everybody, free of charge. You can move on. Okay, so I was I was start starting to move away from going out 
and just capturing images of um, the uh, COVID-19 group, I wanted to start capturing images of um, nurses who were at uh, medical locations in Philadelphia where they were testing for COVID-19. So uh, Nurse Hart, who works for a, um, a medical organization located in North Philly, or she, the location that she was in was in North, North Philly. Uh, I went over to her uh, office one, one day and I took a, um, a studio light with me. Of course, my intention before COVID-19 was to do work like this, where I had to go to an environment and actually uh, take a, um, a studio light with me to light up an environment. So uh, this particular morning I had, you know, I had the intention and I did you know, light uh, this particular individual with a, uh, a studio light. And I could have used a speed light on camera, um, speed light, or I could even have uh, taken the uh, speed light off camera and, and maybe put it on a light stand or something. But a speed light would not have given me the, uh, the scope of uh, coverage that I wanted in the softness um, I wanted. So I uh, put the, uh, the amount of light in a uh, soft box and did her in that particular way. And you move to the next one. Okay. So <clears throat> I had been putting out a, an announcement that I wanted to start capturing images of people who had direct experience with COVID-19. Either they had developed COVID-19 and they had battled through it and they were on their way to becoming well again, or if they had a, a family member who had uh, developed COVID-19. This is Robin Bass. She's actually on this um, presentation tonight. Uh, she said something earlier about one of the images. Robin's sister, who is, I believe she was seven years older than Robin, um, was in a nursing home, a five-star nursing home, as uh, Robin um, shared with me. And she developed COVID-19 in March, I believe. Um, of course, Robin has underlying health conditions. Once she found out that uh, her sister had COVID-19, and as she, I mean, everyone knows, I think, no one was allowed to visit nursing homes during this period of time. Uh, Robin was not able to see her uh, sister in person. Um, the last time Robin saw her sister alive was through a window at the nursing home. Her sister died sometime in March of this year. Um, and it's been really hard on her. It's been like really hard, uh, really, really hard. So we went out to the uh, park this past weekend, took that light that I used in the uh, previous image and did this portrait. The clothes that Robin has on, um, the red purse she's holding, uh, that's her sister's purse and her um, sister's um, clothing that she's wearing in this particular image. And Robin's an example of someone who um, is still not feeling a sense of closure just because she wasn't able to be near her sister when she got sick. I mean, like personally near her. Um, she was only able to see her uh, through a glass window. And um, it's been hard on her. You know? There's another image later on that I decided to uh, show also, but. Um, this is one of the reasons why I decided to do this project, because there's a lot of people who 
have been affected by COVID-19 either. Of course, they developed it and they had to go through the uh, challenge of getting through it to the other end where there are individuals like Robin who had a family member who uh, developed it, died from it. And uh, because of their precautions, was not able to uh, be in the room when their family member passed away. Let me move to the next one. So this is a uh, portrait I sort of created also. He's actually a medical student. Um, and I didn't just want to take a picture of him uh, in the environment, I guess, showing I don't know, the people in the background, testing people. I asked him to uh, stand behind this um, utility pole. And I just wanted to catch a portion of his face with that particular light falling on his, um, on his eye there. Um, and I decided to do it this way because coronavirus was still so unknown um, to me and others. I just wanted to create an a image of maybe a human being still not certain how coronavirus moves in this environment and what's safe and not safe. You move to the next one. So this is back over in Chester. Um, wanted to capture like a wide angle image where you know, these are, this is an image example of uh, people sitting in the chairs that were put out for individuals um, as they were waiting to be tested. And as I mentioned earlier um, during this presentation, all the testing was always done outside um, in the fresh air uh, to decrease the possibility of either the um, health professionals um, contracting uh, COVID-19 or the people that they were testing. Um, developing uh, COVID-19. And you can move to the next one. And this is the same location. It was always common <clears throat> that they had lines of people in cars waiting to be tested. And on the other side of this building, that's where the uh, individuals were sitting in chairs, um, were sitting waiting to be uh, tested. I just wanted to show a, uh, like a, uh, I guess an environmental um, image that uh, showed there was always you know, two different ways of being tested, either in your car or if you were a uh, walk up, sitting in a chair outside. And the, uh, that line of cars probably went two blocks down the street. How many hours were they there? Normally three hours or so, three to four hours, or until they were finished. Uh, at Enon Baptist Church, uh, one of the days I was there, like I said before, they had they tested over 250 people. So they were there until they finished. They didn't have a, um, a deadline. They didn't stop until everyone who came to be tested was tested. Can you move to the next one? Okay, this is the last image. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, you know, this thing with Robin and our sister is not, it's not, um, hasn't been finalized yet. So I just wanted to capture or show this other image. Um, uh, from a different angle. Uh, Robin was like really, really emotional during the um, capturing of, this, of this, these images. Um, really, really emotional. She actually started tearing up at times. So it's not over. It's not over for a lot of people. And I want to move forward with, the, uh, with this project. 
with regard to, you know, really meeting people who are willing to, uh, you know, do these portraits um, and sharing their stories and plan on turning it into a, uh, a multimedia um, type of uh, project where I'm shooting video at the same time, of course. Uh, the story that Robin shared with me really needed to be, um, I wish I had been shooting video at the same time. It's very, um, it's very, very um, hard to mention. People who think that COVID-19 is fake or not real or propaganda, uh, that's of course it hasn't touched them. It hasn't touched them. I was actually listening to uh, NPR today, I think it was, and a, uh, a doctor was talking about her father who you know, developed in, uh, COVID-19, died from it. Um, and, you know, it's a real story. Um, Chris and Ron ask, how has COVID changed your photographing style? Well, Initially, well, one thing, I always wear a mask now. Um, I keep at least six feet apart. Uh, Robin was wearing her mask until um, she took it out, she, until she took it off. I always wear a mask all on, not when I'm doing work now. Um, I try to shoot everything outside. Matter of fact, I haven't shot anything outside uh, recently, even though I did, so, I did something for the, uh, a news outlet about a month and a half ago. We shot almost all of the uh, assignment inside. I'm sorry, not inside, outside. We did go inside for a brief period of time, but I kept my mask on for the entire time. And, and the individual I was on photographing, he took his off. Um, but as soon as I finished, I, uh, I put my mask back on. I always wear a mask all the time. So we went over just because we started a little late. Um, is there anybody else who has a question for Raymond? Um, the work sort of elicits a lot of conversation. Jill writes the image of the, um, the elder woman that was just straight on with a mask on her chin and her eyes were so deep. Um, Jill writes, the image is religious, which I thought was really interesting. And Ron um, Tarver writes um, that you, some of your images, and I immediately thought at the same time he wrote it, um, from The Country Doctor by W. Eugene Smith. In Life right, Met right. Yeah. That, was, you know, that was one of the, the, Eugene Smith had a huge exhibit at the Philadelphia Museum of Art years ago. I've been hugely affected by photographers like him. Um, his work was, to me, fine art in nature. I mean, I, me I remember the exhibit at the African American, I mean, at the uh, Philadelphia Museum of Art. All his work was in black and white. The walls were painted black and in black. You know, so I've, all, I've been, I'm just hugely affected by uh, that look of fine art photography, or um, I think someone earlier said that my images look painterly. Painter. Well, I do it on yeah, I do it on purpose because I've been affected by. I mean, that's the type of work I love. I mean, even um, Helmut Newton. I just love that look. I'm not. I don't like just plain ordinary photojournalistic images. I want to create images that um, that touch the human heart, that touch my own heart, and that causes people to stop and look and feel, and to contemplate the meaning of life. And I think right now, I mean, I've been doing photography for a while. I think I'm maybe 10% into my potential as a photographer. And I'm hyper-focused on um, get to that other 90%.
because I think this is a gift that the universe gave me and that I have to um, do what I'm supposed to do, you know, do that other 90%. I, um, I think it's a pretty powerful way to end. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, there's, I just want to make sure there's no more questions. I really appreciate um, everybody staying in and, and hanging in there. Yeah, I do too. I... <laughs> um, Ellen writes, and I feel like if people want to stay on, you're welcome. Um, mm. And we are going over now, but uh, Ellen asks, uh, how much editing do you do with your photographs from a photo, from a photojournalist aspect? Well, when I, if I go, if I go out and I shoot an assignment, say for the inquiry, I, I do hardly any editing. I mean, with regard to making adjustments in my files that I, that I send to um, the news outlet. Um, but when I, um, if I'm asking, if I'm, if I'm understanding the question correctly, but when I'm doing work for myself, then I do make some adjustments with regard to um, contrast and stuff like that. Does that answer your question, Ellen? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Thanks. Uh -huh. yeah. I um, in reality, I do photography for myself. Um, when I finish doing what I'm paid to do when I'm on assignment, then I look for images that soothe my soul. You know, so um, that's my approach. You know, I have to I make sure that I capture the images that the client wants. But after that, I have to um, do That's something. why I asked you the question. There's yeah, often yeah. a difference. There is a difference. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a big difference. time difference. But what I'm noticing nowadays, because I'm on Instagram a lot now, um, just looking at images, I'm noticing that a lot of people nowadays seem to be, even if they're doing photojournalistic type work, they're creating images that are, to me, artistic in nature. Mm -hmm. So they're moving the, um, they're moving the, um, what's that word? They're moving ahead. They're not staying in the same old way of, uh, making or capturing images that used to be shown in news outlets in the past. Of course, there was, this, there was a thing years ago where even back with film, you could only burn and dodge, but so much. Otherwise you would be um, criticized. Mm -hmm. You'd be criticized. I think that's changing nowadays because people are going to a higher level, going to a higher level. And I think in order to be outstanding, I mean, I heard a uh, presentation last week, uh, photographer was a, uh, or is a fashion slash um, beauty photographer. Um, she went to a review. Uh, she had been doing photography for about eight years, starting at 15, she went to school for photography, showed her um, portfolio to a um, magazine editor uh, she knew she did, you know, beautiful work. Person looked at the work and said, you know, this is beautiful. Gave her the, uh, her portfolio back. And he told her, you know, I see beautiful stuff all the time. Pretty women. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it was, you know, it was a lesson. It was a, really a life lesson. I see, you know, pictures of pretty people all the time. You know, pretty clothes. Yeah. Um, it bothered her initially. And what she realized, and, and it was inspiring to me, she realized as a result of that, what she took as criticism initially was more of a eye-opening um, insight into the potential, I'll say it this way, the potential of human beings. You can, you know, you can either create beautiful work or write beautiful stories like a lot of people, or you can make a decision to become great. And 
this particular person, and I follow her on um, Instagram. I look at her work. I mean, she's she's you know her, in, name? Her, her name is her last name is Adler, A D L E R. She's out in New York City. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember her first name, um, but she's a fashion photographer and a um, you know, fashion photographer. She controls that light. Is strong. Is strong. Um, uh, I I have um, just one comment because I was looking at your colors real quick. Yeah, that's yep. Yeah, that's, yep, that's a, right. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I was looking at your colors, and I just was in New York, and I saw Titus Kaffer's latest show of paintings. Mm -hmm. I promise you, the the aquas, the greens, the purples. Mm -hmm are in his paintings. You gotta, right. if you even go on the gallery that you can, I think you can see images of the work of the paintings, but- What's his name again? Uh, Titus Kaffer, I put it in Titus. the chat. Okay, okay, good, okay. He's a mm -hmm. pretty well-known young painter. Okay. Yeah, I, um, before I became a photographer, I had to, I took a year off between um, high school and going to college. And I took a course in art. And I started visiting the Philippine Museum of Art. And I think that, I mean, I didn't understand it back then. I was always going to be a photographer or some, somebody in the art field somewhere. And um, so I want to thank you for that comment because um, I'm sort of listening to my own daggone soul as far as how to create. <laughs> I'll put that yeah. on a shirt. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, uh, Robin, I just, Robin's been in the space and Robin keeps adding some beautiful things. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Robin. I'm glad she's here this evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she says, Raymond Holman has the ability to capture the depth of emotion felt by his subjects. subject. I wore my sister's clothing so that her spirit would be present as our story was documented. So grateful for this experience to aid in the documentation of the aftermath of COVID-19. We really do have to end, okay. but I want to thank you all for thank staying you. and sticking it out with us. Yeah. It was great. Uh, thank thank you. Worth you. the wait. Yeah, I love your work. So but thank I you. I really stories. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I love your stories. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Jason Reblando is going to be giving a talk. Um, and uh, thank you again. Um, and come yeah. back. I appreciate it, Lori. Take care of yourself. Really good. Yeah, okay. Take care. Okay, we'll talk soon. All right, okay. Raven? All right, bye. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.